Okay, welcome everyone to this NatSpec Tech Ability webinar on Chrome OS Flex, turning slow laptops to Chromebooks. If you've got any questions or you want to make any of the requests for webinars, feel free to follow us at Twitter at tech underscore ability one. So I actually um, came into possession of a few older laptops um, and was asked what I could do with them. Uh, so I thought I'd look into it as a bit of a research um, project and look at how they could be utilized. I came across Chrome OS Flex. Um, so we'll, today we'll go over the overview of that. We'll look at the advantages versus disadvantages of that versus Windows. We'll look at the compatibility of your devices, how to install it, and then finally just uh, a few useful resources there. So Chromebooks, just to start from the very basics, they're budget-friendly laptops that run on Chrome OS operating system. So Windows is an operating system, Chrome OS is an operating system. It's a bit different in that applications and programs are stored in the cloud, i.e. online, um, so they'll need an internet connection to use. Uh, the main advantage is they don't require high-spec machines. Now, Chromebooks are specific devices made with Chrome OS in mind. Chrome OS Flex is made for existing PCs and Macs that have a different operating system that you want to convert to Chrome OS. So the management enrollment is all done through Chrome Education Upgrade and Google Admin Console. So there's a lot of similarities there, um, but there are a few differences and we'll go on to those later. So Chrome OS versus Flex. Flex does not have the um, some of the security features. So that's uh, verified boot and Google security chip. Um, it won't have firmware updates, which are the updates to the uh, device itself in the BIOS, the uh, UEFI. Uh, those you'll need to do separately. Uh, it doesn't have the same trusted platform module and encryption. Uh, but it does have some available, uh, so you can still uh, have encryption. It doesn't have access to Google Play and Android apps, which is a, a major downside to this. And obviously, if you're using a laptop, it won't have the same key Google keyboard layout as if you bought the full Chrome OS um, device. Uh, it doesn't have full hardware support, uh, so there are some exceptions. Um, and we'll cover some of those later. Uh, and it doesn't have the same enrollment systems either. So the advantages to Flex are over Windows in particular are that you can use lower spec laptops, um, so they won't be running so slowly, uh, the faster booting speeds. Um, and also with those lower spec laptops, it does mean that there's uh, lower energy consumption usually as well. Uh, there will be ongoing support. We expect the operating system to be supported for, for a long time. Uh, if we look down at um, the bottom point there, Windows 10 is expected to be unsupported from October 2025, which will mean you won't get those security updates, whereas we expect Chrome OS to be ongoingly um, yeah, updated. There's easier management. There's, at times, it depends. If you're already supporting as an organization or as an individual a, a Windows uh, computer, then actually the change might be quite difficult. If you're already uh, using the Google infrastructure, then it may be easier management. Um, and some of the support that they're offering uh, comes through Google Education Upgrade and they're promising um, operating system upgrades, device management with all the Google Admin Console, uh, plus 24 seven IT admin support as well. The disadvantages are that it requires a reliable internet connection. On the right hand side, I've put Maslow's hierarchy of needs with uh, self-actualization, esteem, social needs, safety and security, physiological needs. And then at the bottom, I quite like that people add Wi-Fi. <laughs> to it, uh, which is obviously joking, but it is, in this case, it is very relevant because there's a lot of things you won't be able to do without Wi-Fi, um, so you definitely need that connection. There's limited storage capacity on there, and there's limited functionality in that you can't use 
a lot of desktop apps that you would within Windows, uh, such as Microsoft Office, and you won't be able to do things like gaming um, as easily without web-based games. Uh, Chromebooks only work with Google Cloud print, print ready printers as well. So it's worth checking into that and if you'll have to change your printing. The compatibility, Chrome OS Flex works on most Windows, Mac and Linux devices manufactured over the last 10 or more years. We're going to focus today on Windows devices more, but there's no reason why you can't do it on Mac and Linux. The, um, they have a complete list, um, and I've included the source here, um, that tells you the certified models list. Um, if anyone has a model that they'd like me to look up now, um, then feel free to do so. It should be on the bottom of your laptop, um, and it, there'll be usually a, a model number um, written there. And they have different levels of support. Uh, so certified, whether there's minor issues, major issues, or decertified. And if they are counted as that certified, then what we have is the following functionality. Audio input, at least one method. Audio output, at least one method. Internal display, if that's available on that device video output, installation, network, whether that's Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or both, uh, touchpad, keyboard, um, sleep and resume functions, the system UI and the graphics, USB, and a webcam, again, if that's present. It doesn't include, um, it might it might include these, but there's limit, there might be limited functionality, automatic screen rotation, Bluetooth, keyboard shortcuts and function keys, touch screens and SD card slots. So that's a bit of a, a risk. You might not have those functions. If it's not listed on any of the devices, um, then you might still find that Chrome OS Flex works. Um, however, the changes in functionality and performance can't be guaranteed between updates. What that means is an update might come along and then it might not work. So it's all to do with that risk and reward and whether it's worth updating. What I might just do is just show you what the certified model list looks like. Uh, so I'm just going to open that link, change my share. So the, these are the things that it, it's, um, these are the things that are guaranteed to work, not guaranteed to work. If we go to the certified models list, these are all the models along here. So Dell, for example, is a very common one. You can look and you can find, is it a latitude? What's the number? And those are the kind of um, model numbers that you'll be looking for on your laptop or device. Okay, back to the slides. So as a minimum device requirement as well, um, you're looking at your device um, having Intel or AMD um, x86 64-bit compatible device. Uh, they don't work with the ARM processors, um, which are a different brand from Intel or AMD. Uh, RAM, you need four gigabytes of RAM. Internal storage, you need 16 gigabytes to install uh, the, uh, in the um, operating system. You need to be able to have full administrator access and make it bootable from a USB device. Processor and graphics wise, um, the components made before 2010 might result in a poor experience. And it's worth pointing out the risk before you get started. Um, we're not advising you to do this. Obviously, you'll have to weigh up the options and look at all the different um, resources that we've provided and see whether it's the right choice for you. Always use IT support you might have access to, uh, whether you're an individual or an organization. Make sure you back up any data that might get lost if you're installing on a new device. And just be aware of any ongoing support changes. So if suddenly you're bringing a Google Chromebook um, in uh, to your organization, does your IT team support that? How are you aware of any changes to the policy and the data security and the risk and all those kind of things? So that's a small print, just need to be aware of that. It might be different if you're an individual using a device. 
And especially with some older devices, there might be very little to, to lose in terms of uh, regaining some functionality of those. I know lots of organizations have a scheme where they sell on um, devices to people within the organization um, at a, at a um, discount, uh, which is really useful for, for members of staff. So let's get stuck in. Um, you need a USB drive, eight gigabytes or more. Uh, then you need to create a USB installer with the Chrome OS Flex image. Um, you need to do this on another device, so have another laptop um, or computer available. You then need to add the Chromebook Recovery Utility extension. Uh, so if I click on that, and we just look and see what that looks like. Here we go. So here's the Chromebook Recovery Utility. Um, I've already added it. Um, so uh, usually in that position there, you'd be able to add to Chrome. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's the small spanner symbol here, recovery extension tool. So if I click on that, you should be able to see now um, Chromebook recovery utility, created recovery media for your Chromebook. And that's where you'll need an eight gig or larger USB drive. So you click on get started, um, you give it a name, um, and go from there. Pick back up at the slides again. Okay, so once you've turned it on as I did, you launched the extension, that's what it looks like. So it's a bit of an unusual way to install. Um, you then go through the steps on um, what we were looking at there, uh, which is to select a model from the list, um, and then select a manufacturer and you want to find and click Google Chrome OS Flex. Uh, under select a product, then you need to again just choose Chrome OS Flex. And then you click continue and you follow the steps to install to the USB. Then you should have a USB with the installation files on. Then you need to go to your computer that you want to set this up on. Uh, you need to make sure it's turned off. Insert the USB. Then we want to boot the device from the USB. Now that generally requires um, pressing a key from starter repeatedly. And I'll show you the key that, that will be for your particular model on the next slide. Once you've done that, you can select the USB as a boot device through a one-time boot menu, which means it will say, um, how do you want to load up your system now? And you'll just choose through the USB. Or you can go into BIOS um, or UEFI, and then you can choose what the default order is that you load your devices up on. That looks very different in different computers. Um, if you do need to, you just Google um, uh, selecting USB as boot device through BIOS, and it will give you an idea of what that should look like and then follow the installation steps from there. So these are the different manufacturers along the left-hand side, Acer, Apple, Asus, Dell, Gateway, HP, and these are their boot keys um, that will take you into those modes. Once you've got that, you should be into Chrome OS Flex. Uh, so it will take a little while, um, but once you're there, uh, on the Welcome to Chrome OS Flex screen, click Get Started. Then it will give you a choice. Um, so on the start using Chrome OS Flex screen, you can click try it first if you want to keep booting from a USB. And then you'll need the boot the USB each time all the files are on there that you need to boot the device. Or if you want to have it completely set up on your laptop, click install Chrome OS Flex to complete your installation to your device. And then you'll have it all set up. Um, and you can start using it. There are other steps that you'll need to do um, if you're an organization. Um, you'll need to start device management for your organization, for example. Um, if it hasn't worked, uh, you might have to trouble uh, shoot the installation failures. Um, you can also ask for help on the Chrome OS Flex help community. And then we've also got the Chrome OS Flex page there and the education upgrade page. Uh, which is useful if you're an organization. Okay, so that's the end of the webinar.
Uh, if you've got any questions, then feel free to email us techability at natspec.org.uk. Uh, or you can catch us on Twitter at tech underscore ability one. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.